first started playing music and creating music Whew. I um, I guess I kind of when I was like really really young my dad uh, tried to teach me and my uh, sisters like piano or, or guitar or whatever when we were like my the first time I can remember it was like like five or six or something being in the garage maybe seven but I didn't really uh, learn anything there. It was more, all I learned was uh, 
that sometimes uh, people of authority or parents or whatnot are like, this is how to do something. So all, uh, all I got from the experience was someone telling me, do this, this is how to do this. And so I wasn't interested uh, in it. And so maybe that wasn't, so I didn't really start then. I could have, but I uh, didn't because I just wasn't into the vibe. So it's more like that might be, uh, you know, when my uh, defiance for authority began. So it's still like that's, <laughs> yeah, I started playing music around five. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, the first time I like tried uh, playing, I had a, a guitar. My, my dad had got me a guitar for uh, Christmas and I wanted to, uh, you know, to learn how to play. 12 years old and I needed guitar lessons. And my mom, who I lived with, uh, she had someone from church choir from the church that uh, she, she went to, we went to, and um, uh, the first lesson, uh, she said, so what kind of guitar do you want to play? And I said, well, I would like to learn how to play rock and roll guitar. And she said, okay, we're not going to do that here. We're going to work on Amazing Grace, and I'm not going to show you chords. We're just going to do it note by note. And that's what it was like for like three months. And then we had a recital and uh, had to play Amazing Grace with just like the note. So it was just, you know, it's just the note of it. And so I put the guitar down after that. It was like, looks like I'm not gonna be a guitar player. Uh, and then uh, when I was 18, 17, 18, I uh, started uh, teaching myself bass. Um, and, uh, but then for like in the span of a year, year and a half, I had three bases stolen from me from different places. Um, so I took that as a, you know, possible sign and said, I'm not going to play bass. And then, uh, um, and then I was hanging out with some friends in like 1996 at this point I was, so 19 years old. Um, and, uh, uh, uh my friend Matt. Uh, who had just done like a year in school, came over to some town where I was at and uh, was putting a band together and I was like friends with friends of uh, his and they put the group together and they had a set of uh, congas and I got behind them and played with them and was like, oh, I'm a percussionist. So uh, yeah, so we did, uh, uh, so I played with them some and uh, in 97 we moved to Athens um, and then uh, a little bit after that, I started uh, um, uh, working on playing drums, picked up the guitar again, and went from there. So now I play drums, percussion, guitar, and I and bass. America's best. It's all. It's it's all D. It's like everybody wants to play it like Waylon Jennings, and Jim Jim plays it like awesome drums, it's just crazy. This song, it blows my mind how many people came in like Waylon Jennings and what Jim did to it. Yeah. Is this, uh, I'm trying to pay attention, yeah, it's cool.
What made you be a part of this Athens music scene? Um, actually, it was uh, it was a, a friend of mine. I was literally uh, uh, brought here. I was living in um, in Cobb County. I was actually living in my '69 Volkswagen uh, bus at the time. And uh, um, it's like 1997 springtime, uh, and uh, a friend of mine, I guess for the uh, during the summer, a friend of mine told me that his friend from Athens, Georgia, or who had been living in Athens for the previous year, was coming in into town to kind of like put a band together. Um, and anyway, uh, the friend that told me about it, he's a bass player, and the friend that was coming back home for the summer was uh, my now friend of 22 years, uh, Matt uh, Stossel. Um, and uh, yeah, so like, you know, Pistol came into town, they were putting the band together. There was a set of hand drums, you know, in the in the room. I sat behind them and, and played and, uh, and it was like three, four months later, uh, in August of 97, uh, we all moved to a house in Comer, uh, Georgia. Yeah, and I think I was gonna stay for like two years, right, the, the, same, the same story. I was gonna pass through town for a couple of years before I go head to the big city. Um, but yeah, my plan was always to make it back home to California. I was always looking at Georgia as like kind of a, a, a pit stop. Um, you know, like sent to Atlanta, and then in '97, a friend comes in and you know puts together a group, and it's like let's go to this new place and all about it. Um, yeah, and then after that, after a while, and uh, uh, living in town for about four or five years, I think it was like, uh, gosh, it had to have been seven years. I think I was 24. Um, so uh, when I finally ended up picking up the drum kit and then after that it was just I was you know a drummer for the next decade plus <laughs> Existing right now that include like you know uh, all of us or variations of us together and and uh, I think that's really it's really cool because it's not like a you know a, like a formed or planned kind of collective it's just a situation like this where you ask a question or reminiscing over uh, a list of experiences that I've been through and it's like oh wow kind of like a collective or something <laughs> but yeah and I'm sure I know there's some stuff that's been going on uh, in the last couple of years <laughs>
no longer use the spirit of evil to pay. Yeah, I think that's the, the most, or maybe even the only, uh, like, personal, uh, project. Whereas, like, the, the songs, like, if you listen to my lyrics with, um, the Taxi Cab Verses, or Los Cantares, or James Aurelio, um, or even the songs that I wrote, like, way back with, uh, uh, Mother Jackson, you know, it's just like there's always something like different with the taxi cab versus that was like, uh, um, like quite literally like collecting um, phrases that I saw in the backs of taxi cabs like all over uh, Ghana each time that I went there. And then I took uh, the words, like only the words that I had collected, and um, I uh, put them all in different um, categories, you know, because there was always like politics or religion or just, um, or just like life, um, you know, so, uh, so I would, all the words that I collected from the best of taxi cab verses that had anything to do with religion, I put them down on a column and then just like that. And then from there, I uh, wrote all the lyrics for the taxi cab verses songs. Um, and, uh, um, so never done anything like that before in my life or since and it was like of course like lyrics and stories and things that I would never do on my own um, Los Cantares is uh, more of a like it's a have fun garage rock bar band uh, mentality so that kind of thinking is like if there are any thoughts that I have on um you know, on anything, it's like we don't really talk about politics because there's enough of there's enough of it. People do it. People do it better. I don't need to be a people. Um, and then, uh, um, but well, you know, it's like uh, like I believe that, that cannabis should be uh, legal and and use and and uh, you know. Um, used in, and I think in a way that it's meant to be used um, as, a, as a medicine and a resource. So I'm, you know, so I always sing about, uh, um, you know, pro, pro, pro reefer uh, uh, topics in our tunes um, in a super fun way. Um, so that's that band. And then James Aurelio is uh, kind of, the, I think really the only one that's, um, that, uh, there, there are more elements of my own like personal thought or like when it comes to like uh, relationships or um, or life or you know um, like uh, to my I guess they're more autobiographical is what is what's up is you know um, it's more like half and half whereas the other uh, bands I'll like throw like one line in a an entire song that had to do with like a part of my life. No one will ever know what it is, you know. So it's just like one little snippet. But with James Aurelio, it's more, uh, it's more exposed. So I'm going internal, but everybody's, you know, kids are listening. Yeah, they're getting more of my story. What do you want fans to know about you? Um. that uh, I was never in it for the money. <laughs> um, no, I just, uh, I think my, what I want fans to know about me is, um, uh, yeah, that really like my, like, I guess my thoughts on what I strive for uh, artistically and what I'm doing is, uh, is, yeah, is more about, um, uh, you know, it's like recognizing like music as a um, as as a conduit or a form of like communication without speaking, and it's a way to like bring and unite people together without you know um, without just all the shit that's attached to uh, life and being different from other people, whether it's class or you know or your politics or your religion or your color or anything. It's just like it's it's those times where we're all 
are all surrounded by the same like literal frequency and and we're there because we want to be there um you know like that's that's what i want to be and that's what i want to uh provide so like you know basically that way like you know uh, when it comes to my bands um it's it's trying to uh um to literally provide a good time a good uh a good feeling like no matter what what is happening right now is like um you know uh is is like um it's like if what we're doing with music is just like putting out our own emotions or thoughts or anything like that you know then um then like what we're doing or what i'm doing is saying like you know a thousand blessings to all <laughs> and it's like let it out there um yeah we will be nine i'm just gonna ramble you know because that's how i do my name is jim it's nice to meet you what's up buddy let's rock and roll yeah see y'all later <laughs>
tell me about all the bands that you've played in. I see you have the book that uh, was printed in what year? This was, um, oh man, what year are we in? Uh, this is the book that, uh, uh, that Jason Thresher made, uh, that he, uh, um, you know, uh, visited with 33, uh, musicians and, um, it's a fantastic book, killer idea, and it's just beautiful. Um, but, uh, but yeah, now it's, it gets to be my cheat sheet because you asked everyone I played with, um, and the, a lot of them are listed here. So, uh, well, I guess currently what's maybe not on here is uh, I've been doing the solo uh, thing under my first and middle name, the James Aurelio. Um, I just started playing with Chip McKenzie like last week. Uh, that's that's a band now, and we're recording that, so Chip has no excuse. Guitar doesn't. It's not even playing on the verses. Uh, okay. The guitar comes in on the, uh, on the on the C and the on the uh, C oh, yeah, thing, yeah. And, then, and then it does the cor the choruses. to Buffalo Hawk, that's uh, Paul McHugh, uh, Paul McHugh, um, and I actually I was in Paul's uh, first band, that's Mother Jackson, it was Paul, me, my friend uh, uh, Richard Mikolka and uh, um, Chuck Bradburn made the records, um, and then we had another 14, 15 friends that played bass over the years, but uh, yeah, so Pilgrim is the band that uh, Paul um, uh, uh, started after uh, after Mother Jackson. Um, I'm 
on the fucking hater. Don Chambers and Goat. I play started by playing a uh, step ladder uh, with hubcaps and um, uh, like suitcases and uh, one time I think we, we put like an old kitchen sink on it so it was everything in the kitchen sink um, and that was uh, the super uh, super cool. I went from doing that to I uh, ended up playing drums and with drums and the ladder uh, uh, set up along with it after a while. But the very first time, the way I started was that uh, um, Don, Chambers and Go were playing at the Morton Theater. I think it was 2004 for Ad Fest. Um, and it was uh, part of the award ceremony. And he ran into me in the street and asked me if I wanted to play a uh, uh, shopping cart with uh, hubcaps attached to it and some other knickknacks and I said yes yes I do and uh, he's like okay here's sound check here's what we set up so we got there and he had to get a double bed with like uh, with hubcaps fishing wire there's like some spoons and stuff a couple of kazoos um, and uh and so that he couldn't, didn't have time to go snag a shopping cart. So we went and asked the Morton if we could borrow their uh, their ladder. So we just set up this ladder, and while the band was setting up, I just like used duct tape and fishing wire and uh, fastened the hubcaps as best that I could, um, and we did the show. Um, I'm pretty sure one of them like went flying like towards Donnie like uh, during the set, um, but yeah, that was the beginning of joining Go. It was like you know, now like going back to the the question about like being a part of music in Athens or staying, you know, it's just just talking about a few bands. It's like, oh, it's the opportunity to like play with your friends and maybe pick up a duffel bag of hubcaps if your buddy asks you to do it and put it on a fucking ladder, you know, that's like, that sounds like fun to me. Um, Buffalo Hawk is a uh, Pistols uh, uh, band, I play drums. Um, with that, we made a record, I think in 2012, 13, um, but uh, over at um, uh, over at Zeke Sayers place, at uh, uh, Shoal Street, uh, Shoal Creek, I think is where it's at, um, Gypsy Farm uh, Recording Studios. Um, but, uh, yeah, that place is really cool. Uh Finger and Bruni Boys, those are two names that uh, 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 myself, my friend Mark Tissenbaum, Joe Rowe, and George Davidson, uh, we um, uh, got together for a good while and just played improv, and we did um, two shows at the Flicker a few years back, and one of them was as Tall Finger, um, and, uh, and the other was Bruni Boys. Bruni Boys, I guess, being like like white boys and tall finger being the the tall finger. Uh, um, I think he was saying that either one of his kids overheard it or, or a story where um, where a kid uh, said that uh, something along the lines of Jesus said 
don't use your tall finger. <laughs> Hence the name. I, I like it. Um, something that started a long time ago at the uh, at the Flickr, I think at the beginning, um, and that was uh, Heather McIntosh and uh, and Don and Eric Harris and uh, and just. Uh, um, just a whole bunch of uh, folks, I think John Fernandez, um, but uh, after a bit they, I, I got to play a couple shows with them. I think one of the most memorable, I think like, uh, I was recently thinking about one of my, what were my favorite shows to play or favorite uh, experiences uh, in terms of like either being in a cool room or in, a, in front of a big crowd or where it was just, you know, uh, somewhat of a harmonious evening or, you know, or if, uh, or like the chances to like play for your heroes. And there was this time at the Morton Theater, again, I think the only other time I played there, uh, where um, Flicker Orchestra, we opened up for the Sun Ra Orchestra uh, at the Morton in 2015. Um, but it was super, super cool, super fun. We had, uh, they had like a, um, the Flickr Orchestra folks uh, um, showed uh, old films of like Dada films of, um, uh, you know, like a, a animated uh, like um, bugs and stuff he used to like to tell a story where they would actually stop motion film and then we would uh, improvise music. Uh, to that um, so it was pretty fun to like watch a movie while your back is to the crowd and the back and the crowd is totally sold out because they're there to see Sun Ra Orchestra and you know uh, and you're like creating a soundtrack to to the video just super interesting super fun um, I think still like that might be my favorite um I played some shows with her for like three, four years and uh, on a couple of her records and she's just one of my best friends and a beautiful person. She's just so great. Um, pipes you see, pipes you don't. Uh, that's uh, uh, Pete Urchik. Um, he's the bass player for Los Guitares and uh, um, for a bit there I think he played with Moss as well and we were playing uh, starting to play his songs, which he played under the name Pipes You See and Pipes You Don't. Garbage Island, I was one of the three drummers uh, in that band, and that was just like a huge improv band, I think of like nine, nine, ten members, uh, two, at least two basses, uh, again, three drums, lots of guitars, um, uh, and that was like helped by that one and the next one, Echo Canyon, that was uh, uh, led by uh, um, Craig Leesky. Well, Garbage Island was more of, more of a Garbage Island, uh, a communal effort. But yeah, Echo Canyon, uh, that was Craig, myself on drums, um, uh, pistol on pedal steel, Chuck Bradbury on stand up bass, and Paul Q uh, on, uh, uh, on keys. Uh, T. Hardy Morris in the outfit. Um, when T. Hardy put out his first record, I uh, played with him for a uh, uh, good like, year or two. Um, another person who's just a beautiful person and, and it's just super cool and writes incredible songs um, there's like no shortage of just talented and interesting people here man um, speaking of Madeline uh, Madeline Adams I played drums for her from like 2007 until 2012 I'd say probably Madeline and Don Chambers and Goat are probably the two bands that I did the oh, and Mother Jackson uh, were probably uh, like the bands that I did the some of the most touring with Mother Jackson. We toured a good bit from like 2002 through like at that time already 
now I think in 2009 I did like 175 shows that year with like different bands and stuff um, uh, I think that was still my busiest year but like yeah so Madeline that was uh, uh, Jacob on bass Jason Trahan on guitar myself on uh, drums so gosh with like Jacob and Jason that's already like at least five five bands we've been through so far that they're all in uh, Heap that's uh, Brian Howard um, I was the percussionist from like the um, from the beginning from 2007 until like 2010 or so I think yeah um, and that's just uh, Brian he plays bass with uh, uh, um, well with the solo the James Aurelio solo thing and with the Taxi Cab Versus um, and has his own huge list of people that he plays with um, uh, and another beautiful person that's super cool and interesting uh, my god but uh yeah the heaps is just it's just such a fun band started off with just two two bass players percussion drums uh and horns and i think now uh uh um, they have guitar like guest guitar players that play with them sometimes it's just super cool super funky um Buyate, that's a project where i play um uh percussion um uh, just a djembe and a rattle and that's um, Adam Klein's um, project where he went to Mali and uh, made a record with uh, musicians over there um, and then every once in a while we'll, uh, we'll get up there and, and um, you know and play he does his own stuff most of the time so the, uh, the Mali project is a, doesn't happen so often um, but it's always fun. Um, I think the last time we played was, ooh, it's probably been a year or so. Um, Bo Freeze. Bo Freeze, I uh, was, um, gosh, one of my best friends for, well, until unfortunately uh, he passed this year, like I think just over a year ago. Um, but uh, he had his band, uh, I was in his band from, I think, 2003 until 2006, 2007, he moved away for a bit before coming back, but uh, that was uh, for just under his name, the Freeze, um, like super heavy, super fast, probably like, like the uh, heaviest band I've been in, and that was with uh, Bo singing and playing guitar. Um, uh, a friend of ours, Jason, uh, this guy that I think no one really knows because he never leaves his house and plays bass. Um, uh, Clem Adams from Garbage Island and Savages, he's playing the guitar. Uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, a, just a super, uh, like, just blast. I mean, there were songs like, uh, like fuck like a demon and just no don't just leave it at that yeah that's a, there were songs like that yeah that was just a good time uh, Big Iron was uh, uh, um, Don Chambers um, Jason Korn and myself and we formed at the uh, Flicker Bar I think it was one of those uh, you know if my memory does some kind of justice. It was one of those conversations that you're having at the bar where you're talking about how bands always start at the bar. Um, and, you know, we're all bartenders at the Flicker Bar. Um, it was a slow night, uh, obviously, if we're having such a talk. And you have the bartender and the other two guys were hanging out, me and Donnie and uh, Jason. Um, and, uh, and we decided to go ahead and, and, uh, and do uh, just that after a while after talking about it. We're like, all right, let's do it. I think we had like a, a napkin and just wrote out like a, a quick like three week contract. Like we have three weeks to, to book and play a show um, and, uh, and all signed it. 
Um, and we did it. Three weeks later, we played at, uh, at the Caledonia under the name uh, Pig Iron, and then played, probably had a band for like, like two or three years before, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that band was super fun. Two guitars and, uh, and drums. Um, and everybody, uh, everybody sang. Um, and then there are Sleepy Horses. I played, I played and toured with them for like six months to a year in 2006, like spring, summer, and fall. Um, and, uh, and that was just like, just a, a great, um, uh, like shoot, gazy kind of, um, uh, uh, band and music and uh, just a lot of fun, different style for me. And then um, uh, also there was um, um, a while after that, but some of the uh, members from that band uh, I played with a band called the Diamond Center. Um, uh, they're out in Austin, Texas now. But they're actually they're the folks that I go anytime if I do go out and do a tour like on my own singing songs or something like that I'll stop by over there and hang out with them and spend time and just uh, uh, just make music and you know we'll record and um, you know like done it like two or three times and have no idea what it sounds like but it's just one of more of those like process type things just hanging out with, with your people and letting things out um, and then Nem and Timmy, that was a quick lived, quick named band. That was actually the group that um, uh, that was formed by Pistol uh, in Cobb County, like that brought us to uh, Athens in in um, in 1997. So yeah, so August 20th. 1997, uh, uh, yeah, like we came in and then we played like um, some shows like through Halloween of uh, that same, that same year. And that was pretty much that for that group. But like still, you know, like within that pretty much everybody um, just about, but, uh, you know, so it's like from that, it's like, a uh, again, like a 20 plus year, like friendship and like musical, uh, friendship with like Pistol and all these other folks that I've met over the last 20 years and playing it and then like, kind of like chip it away at lyrics, which is something, another thing that I never knew. So, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, I did that and just kind of like got towards an ending, like, yesterday um, so that probably that'd be a good one Hey! 
but not when I go. And we were, um, we were like in the Dallas Fort Worth uh, area, but one of the band members, uh, like parents, they had like a Fourth of July like uh, like party cookout for their uh, business. So it was just this like you know like big party for like a couple hundred like people and their family and and friends, um, and. Uh, and our stage was gonna be the like basically like the um, the bed of a semi uh, truck, you know. It's like we were gonna play on a flatbed uh, truck, and uh, and that I think uh, was just like it's just one of those things for whatever reason, you know. It's just like that's one of, that's like one of the one of like the life goals that things to check off, you know. It's like being a, a musician. So that one I checked off. Uh, that I was playing with, uh, it was the Sleepy Horses. Um, uh, Pistol was in that band and on that tour with us also. So like it was just, you know, summer tour. Um, uh, like I think my birthday was during it. It's just a good time and it was like playing on a, you know, flatbed truck. Uh, but uh, so that's more, most memorable. My favorite, possibly on stage, would be. Uh, I, I think I'm just all about playing on trucks, man, uh, because it was with moths, and we were playing a wedding, and that was on uh, like a uh, like a like a uh, kind of a larger truck, and that had a flatbed stage um, on it, and the band was on that. So there's like haystacks around us. Uh, we're on this farm, you know. Um, and we're playing uh, 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 a bunch of co cover songs, some originals, but mainly cover songs. And uh, um, it was uh, Moths. Uh, and so, yeah, Jacob Morris and uh, a bunch of the other members were friends with the, with the bride and groom. And uh, we played that party. So, yeah, so that was another one. That group I was playing just percussion with um, and singing. And... Uh, but to see like all your friends, I think bouncing up and down, you know, like surrounded by haystacks and you're playing things that are like songs you enjoy, uh, you know, written by others, but also, uh, yeah, your own songs as well. Uh, uh, pretty fun, yeah. We got the queen.
resolution is all in how you act. So I don't want Jacob Morris's uh, band, and I played with him for uh, forever. Um, uh, and most of these bands that I've been listing are bands that I had been playing drums with. Um, yeah, and Jacob just writes uh, uh, killer songs. He's up in North Carolina now, but um, he still plays with. Uh, uh, he was one of the original members of Los Cantares. Uh, he and Jason Trahan. Who plays in Los Cantares and the Taxi Cab Versus? Uh, they were both in uh, Old Smokey, uh, um, uh, probably one of my favorite bands that come out of this town. Influences. Um, I think it would have to be, um, it's definitely like always been classic rock, and that was just, I think, just the kind of. Uh, push and pull of uh, uh, my parents being different. My mom was super, super religious um, and so wasn't allowed to listen to music at all. And then at my dad's house, uh, it was like, you know, he uh, uh, um, was a musician himself, like, and, uh, you know, just had a big record collection and he would like make me tapes of uh, the Led Zeppelin, for instance, that was probably the one he did the most because he would uh, uh, record all the the entire like Led Zeppelin catalog on cassettes, and then I would uh, listen to him on. I'd just walk around in the streets in San Diego and listen to him on the uh, Walkman, um, you know, sing along and just and just spend hours uh, walking around, and uh, and then my mom would find him and my, my sister's stuff and she would create a pile and um, and just uh, destroy the shit out of it uh, because, you know, because the music was the sound of the devil and um, it was like, it was for serious. Um, and then, you know, and then sure enough, we'd go and tell my dad and he'd make me another round of Led Zeppelin uh, uh, tapes and, and I'd get back to walking. Um, yeah, so uh, so Led Zeppelin was definitely a huge inf influence in that time. Um, like I guess uh, around that time, I would kind of you know since there was a lack of uh, uh, an ability to to really listen to stuff, um, I would like you know listen to what my friends had. So I had like a, a couple friends where literally all we would do is. Uh, we would take a boombox into the, the sewer, the sewers, uh, like the old uh, dried up sewer uh, uh, drains and uh, um, like over by our neighborhoods in San Diego. And, uh, and then we would just listen to like Metallica or like Steel Pulse, Bob Marley, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, so there was like that, there was uh, um, Bad Religion, No Control. I think was like one of my most like over overplayed like albums like that I listened to um, and uh, you know I, I guess kind of like kind of thematic to what I was pushing against in my like conservative religious upbringing at that time um, yeah and then once I got you know like a little bit older 
Um, and uh, before coming to uh, being sent to Georgia, uh, um, it was like, you know, really all I would see was what uh, was on, um, like, Casey Kasem's top ten on the television or whatever, uh, you know, on the, the local television station. And so, like, my mom was always at Sunday Mass, so, like, we, me and my sisters always watched the show. So that was, like, the, you know, like, you, it was, they listed the top ten hits for the week and then played their videos. So that was, like, the first time that really I, like, heard uh, R.E.M. I had heard R.D.M. from my, you know, my dad was a fan, like, after he moved to Georgia. Uh, uh, so he was a fan of the band, so I knew what they sounded like. But that video to Losing My uh, Religion, uh, you know, just kind of, I think, thematic to, you know, what I've been talking about as far as uh, having a feeling or feeling, you know, like creative or feeling some kind of like, you know, I knew I wasn't shy of a, a, a camera or like being in front of people. Um, you know, so like music could be a thing, but it wasn't allowed. So, uh, yeah, losing my religion in that video and just kind of like that led to like wondering what was going on. And then there was, you know, REM B-52s. Um, and I kind of like stepped away from that when I got to uh, uh, Georgia. I think it was uh, the first two records I bought when I got here was... Uh, um, a kerosene hat uh, by Cracker. started because uh, Jim Willingham and myself uh, well also I just want to play guitar and sing but Jim Willingham and myself we've been talking for years about uh, at that point about playing together and then so when I was thinking about doing this and just playing simple songs with my friends <laughs> called uh, uh, Jim and uh, for like uh, pretty much whenever he can he uh, uh, he would be just shredding lead guitar, but he wrote uh, this song for the for the band. Uh, the future is now. <laughs>
Thank you.